Deborah Holt, and this is a program called Living It Up. And we want to encourage you and lift you up, and we want your life to be looking up. And so uh, we're here today, and I'm so glad you joined us. And it's going to be an interesting program today. I, I promise you won't be bored. And with me today is my special guest, Laura Rudder. Laura, it's so Hello. good to have you Absolutely. Today. You got it. You got we it. We always have a good time when we get a chance to chat, don't yes. we? Yes. Well, today our subject is being healed. And um, Laura has an interesting story, so I'm going to get right into that. Laura is from Villa Grove, which is not far out of Champaign-Urbana area. And uh, I'm just going to get right into letting her do a lot of talking because she's got a lot of exciting stories that I want you to hear. <clears throat> now, Laura, uh, you have just been spoken to by the Lord on several occasions about healing. And you've had some exciting experiences mm -hmm. where you've been able mm -hmm. to be a part of people getting a healing. Yes. And I want to start with your son because yes. that's someone very dear to your heart. Our children are very dear to our heart. So tell me about that. Um, how, how did that happen? What happened with your son? Well, my son... Um, when we were, he was in high school, and it was his senior year in high school. Um, he has, I'll have to go through the whole story, go, okay? You to, just before take you as to long really, as you okay, before you, you can really appreciate and understand this, <laughs> I gotta tell the whole story and tell okay. it from a mama's perspective so you can understand and you get it. Well, my precious son, I have a son and a daughter, yes, they're both precious. When my son was a senior in high school, um, we had our yearly uh, wiener roast at our church that we were attending at the time. And, of course, the boys wanted to do the pickup football. You know how that goes. And it's supposed mm -hmm. to be the touch football. Yeah, yeah. You know how that, okay. Yeah. Right. Well, it didn't turn out that way. And one of the boys, my son did not play football, but he's very tall. He's six foot um, two, very tall young man. But one of the boys that was there, and they were good friends, was a football player, and he was a big boy. He was a really big boy. And he played football, and I think he was on the line, you know, for those of you who know about football and on the line and all that kind of stuff. He was a big boy. Got that established. So my son had the ball, uh, I guess many times, and we had a little bit of rivalry going on there. And this young man decided that um, he'd had enough of my son having the ball so much. So he did a headlock on him and threw him down to the ground and, um, you know, landed on top of him, tackled him that way. So my son said he heard a loud pop in his jaw, mm. and it hurt very, very badly. Mm. And he came Ouch. up to me, yeah, and he came up to me, walked up to me after it happened. I think he tried to suck it up for a while and continue to play like no big deal. Mm -hmm. You know how guys are, you know. And he came up and he said, Mom, and as he's talking to me, his jaw is deviating to the side. I can't tell you if it's the right side or left side, doesn't matter. But it's deviating to the side with every word that he is speaking. Mm. And he said, I think I hurt my jaw and it really hurts. And I said, oh my, obviously you did. Our pastor's wife um, was a nurse. And so I called her over there and she looked at it and she says, I think he has broken his jaw. Wow. So you need to get to the emergency room. And we did. And of course it was a uh, late night on the weekend on a Sunday evening. And by the time we got there, it was late. It was after nine o'clock or so. And, um, we all know what emergency rooms are like anyway, as far as slowness. Sorry, folks, but it's the way it is. And, you know, weekend help and what have you. So not slamming, but that's just the way it is. So they took x-rays, several x-rays, and um, came back. And they showed it was very obvious and very clear. There were two, two big, very distinct um, cracks, breaks in his jaw. Mm. So it was very obvious that he has broken his jaw in two different places. And the doctor said, um, come back tomorrow morning and made the appointment for the maxillofacial specialist um, fast because he's probably going to have surgery to have his jaw wired shut for six weeks or however long they do that, long period of time, and be prepared for that. So totally fast. And so as a mother, that was devastating to me. It was devastating in a, a few ways, you know, as a mother, as your son, it's his senior year in high school. My son um, 
was very active in the choir and in band. And actually, he has a beautiful tenor voice, mm -hmm. very, very, very beautiful high tenor voice. Mm -hmm. At the time, he could sing, I think they call it, um, and now I'm going to get this right, and somebody's going to laugh, and that's okay, but send me an email so I know you watched it, and that's all right. He's, he could have that range that was... The, it wasn't a falsetto either. It was the range that actually went up there for an alto for a woman. That's how high his range was. Wow. And he says to me, Mom, I can't sing it now because my voice has gotten a little deeper as he's mm -hmm. gotten older because he's now 27 years old. But that was devastating because your senior year, you want to have fun and all the competitions that they have for that the school provided for them that he was involved with, that was, that was devastating. So we went home and in the thought of tomorrow morning, we're going to get up and he's going to have surgery and have his jaw wired, wired shut. So I, of course, I went in there after he went to bed because he was exhausted and I just laid hands on him. And I knew all, the only thing I could do as a mama was pray. It was pray, 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 pray. That's all you can do. That's, that's it. You can just pray. And I laid hands on him and I gave my request to the Lord. And maybe at the time back then I was doing some begging. I don't know. <laughs> but I we knew. That yes. Times. But I knew, I knew the Lord God Almighty could heal him. And he was mm -hmm. the only one that could heal him. That Jesus went to the cross for this. He was the only one that could heal him, covered by his blood and his stripes, that, you know, to be healed. So I laid hands and I prayed on him, went to bed and, and didn't sleep. I know I prayed all night long. The next morning, we had um, my dad and his wife come over before we were ready to leave, and they came over, and we stood outside of our house, and it was just happened to be where we were located. It was nothing for show and nothing for whatever. We just happened to be outside on a beautiful fall day, and we said before we go and before they left to go back home, let's just pray over Brandon together as a group. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and you know, two or more in agreement here, mm -hmm. and so we we held hands in a circle and we prayed over Brandon, and we went to the doctor's office. And they said we want to get you know X-rays, new X-rays again, um, because the specialist wanted to do you know his his own and see what he was looking at for the different angles he was taking and what have you too. So they came in, they did um, X-rays on his jaw, and he put him up there, and he says. He said, um, there are no breaks here whatsoever. He said, he said, he goes, one of those, I don't know how to explain it. And I said to him, I said, do you believe in miracles? And he said, yes, I do. And I said, well, I can tell you what happened. His jaw has miraculously been healed. Mm -hmm. And he says, I believe you are correct because it was so obvious the two different x-rays. Don't you love it when yeah. there's actual evidence yes. there? Yes. You know, we hear yes. testimonies of healing, but when you could actually see, see the them. pictures, here's yes. what it was last night and here's what it is yes. today. Which was so awesome. It's yeah. really a faith builder to see that, wow, yeah. that is amazing. Yes. And the fact that he's a singer, you know, I do a little bit of singing and have recorded yes. a couple CDs. So to me, the fact that he was a singer, it's like, oh, Lord, thank you that you saved, yes. you know, his ability to use his voice and yeah. to be able to be a singer again. And it wow. was, it was, it, yeah, it was huge. I mean, like I said, mm -hmm. that was, mm -hmm. those things are like, oh no, his voice and what have you. And, and it turned out then that year he was the, um, the competition that they have, one of them he, they go to and they have, and they pick in the rooms that were, um, there are different rooms for different people to, you know, be judged and what have you. And you judge on yourself. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, they pick a best of day. And for the room that he was in, and all day long of those people that were singing, he was chosen as the best of day wow. in that particular room. Wow. And he was also chosen then for Allstate, wow. which is a big deal that mm -hmm. is, um, I think, Bloomington, Peoria. Big, that's a huge deal to be chosen for Allstate, mm -hmm. to be able to sing. And those are the best of the best that wow. get to go to there. So that's the kind of voice he has. Yes, I, I could exaggerate as a mother, but he truly truly had a beautiful voice and he still does he still does don't get me wrong on that one but he still that does is so amazing yeah so that was you can't deny it when it's up there when it's on the x-rays right there it is you can't deny it that's it was that's a miracle pretty
pretty neat. Absolute miracle. So, so what do you contribute your faith to? Now, I know you had others praying with you. You had some family members praying with you. But how did you know that God would heal? How did you come to know this God? How did you know that God loved you? And, and how did you get saved? How did you ask the Lord in? Tell us a little bit about some background, how you came to know the Lord and then how you grew to have such faith, yes, or, okay. or is it a gift? Okay, or what? okay. well, when I was um, the end of fifth grade, I think you're what, 11, 12, 11 years old, when the end of fifth grade, mm -hmm. my parents were the um, youth group leaders in the church that we attended, and they took um, the youth group, the high school youth group, down to Mattoon, to a David Wilkerson crusade. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you out there will probably know who David Wilkerson is. He died here just a few years ago in a car accident, unfortunately. But David Wilkerson was huge. And if you don't know who he is, go Google him, okay? But um, he took us down to, took the group down to David Wilkerson crusade. He wrote the book, The Cross and the, the Switchblade. Switch Blade, a which a book. movie was named after that, which <laughs> yeah, was in there was a movie New York City, yes. The Cross and the Switchblade. Yes. Good movie, you should watch you it. Should Older see it. movie, but. And, and um, so my brother and I tagged along, of course. You know, he was a sixth grader, I was a fifth grader, and, and we just tagged along. And David Wilkerson was up there speaking, and he gave the altar call, and I went forward, my brother went forward too, and it was, it was something because here I am, a small town little girl, and truly a little girl in elementary school, and I hear all these people with the, their drug paraphernalia, and because this is the height of the 60s, you know, the drug oh. paraphernalia, paraphernalia and actually the beginning of the 70s it doesn't matter yeah. and all their weapons or knives that were thrown up there on the stage it was just eye-opening to me but the power that was in that room which I didn't understand at the time mm -hmm. that I do now mm -hmm. was just so strong so compelling that I went forward and and I was I have a very strong personality if you can't tell and I would just set on fire and I said, my Lord, my life is dedicated to the Lord since then. Mm -hmm. And um, I've just tried to live that way. I've searched, I've been seeking, been reading the Bible all these years, um, been asking, put me, Lord, do connections with people, then wherever I was at, take me deeper. I mean, there's a lot of things that I have done because I just want to know the Lord more and deeper because mm -hmm. he's just awesome. <coughs> and it's just awesome. And the movement of the Holy Spirit is so awesome. But anyway, so I just started growing, you know, a little bit of time, little of time over the years and got people, you know, God put people in my life and to connect with and um, those kind of things. And I just, I think my big thing is I said, I just want to know you more. And I know, I know that you are God. I know that there is Jesus. I know there is Holy Spirit. And all of that was not taught in my actual church. Mm -hmm. So it took my own seeking and what have you to do that. So, But for healing here, we all, it started actually a little before that. Um, one story started before that. If I can share a couple stories. Sure. Okay. Sure. I want to share a couple stories if I can. We always go to, took our, our children, our family, the four of us, to Florida. Every, every year at Christmas time because I'm a school teacher and that was always a good break and good renewal in the middle of the school year. And one time um, we were just happened to make a stop and it was lunchtime and I went in to use the restroom, washed my hands, you know, all that stuff. And there was somebody that just went boom, just right passed out on in the stall right there as soon as I walked into the, to the restroom. So and she was out cold, happened to be an employee. And so I just knew, did what I could do and I crawled under the stall. <laughs> I was a few pounds lighter than I am right now. <laughs> so I can do those yeah. things. <laughs> well, we're all dealing Crawl, with that. Yeah, <laughs> crawled under the stall and I just started praying over her and what have you. And of course, and then I crawled under and, or I didn't, I opened the door and then we got some help. But I came back and just prayed over and what have you, and she called, we called the ambulance and whatnot, and she turned out to be okay. So, um, and then another time then, this was in a, a few, several years ago, that I was in our little local store, and I was talking to my first grade teacher, so a shout out to Mrs. Duncan, okay? Oh, my first grade teacher, who's now like 95 years old, and we were standing there talking, and finished our conversation and she went around 
to the other side and I was still looking at things. She went on the other side of the aisle and I hear this big, loud thud and I knew instantly she had gone down. I knew she did. So I went around immediately to the other side and she was out cold on her back, wow. totally looking unresponsive. So you do what you're supposed to do. Of course, I was been certified in CPR and uh, checking for you know her pulse and what mm -hmm. and her airway. She was breathing. It took a while to find a pulse because it was so wow. very, 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 very faint. And there were sometimes I could not feel it all. Wow. So I did what I knew to do, and I started praying. I just started praying, and I'm not I'm not shy, and I'm I'm a hand raiser, and so I had one hand on her pulse and I was praying and when I could I would raise my hand and mm -hmm. you know what have you and I'd go back and forth to check in her pulse mm -hmm. but the times when I was checking her pulse and I was praying with my hand on her her pulse would come back and it was it was weak but it was yet it was weak but yet strong as far as I could feel it mm -hmm. when I would stop praying the pulse would go totally down and there's sometimes who could not feel it at all. Mm. And every time wow. I start praying again, then her pulse would come back again. So, and those were in between. Somebody could say, well, why did you stop, you know, praying? Well, you had, you know, you're giving orders. Somebody call the, the, the emergency, the 911, and a police officer came in after the call. And this went on for uh, quite so some lots time. lots of people interacting. There, there was a lot of people interacting, the store people and personnel and what have you. And, um, and I actually grabbed one of the, the, um, the workers there, the personnel workers, and uh, asked one of them to pray with me because I knew she was a Christian woman mm -hmm. and the two of us were praying too. So that made, it's like, whoa. There's okay. power in multiplication. There is power, yes. You know, the Bible says if one can put a thousand to fly, two can put 10,000 to fly. Mm. And when we bring someone in and get them to join with us, the prayer power yes. goes up. There's yes, that does. multiplication principle. And so a lot of times when you're really coming against something serious, it's good to grab someone you know is a Christian mm -hmm. and get them to lock mm -hmm. arms with you in prayer and begin to tackle that prayer together. So if you're out there and maybe you're struggling with something and you're like, well, I've prayed about that over and over. Get someone that you know is a believer, that you know has accepted Christ, and get them to join with you on that thing. And the two of you together can take out a lot more. Um, you're, there's a lot more prayer power there when it's multiplied. Mm -hmm. So that was really good that you mm -hmm. got someone and, and grabbed someone and had them start praying with you. Mm -hmm. You know, the scriptures talk about how Jesus died for our salvation, but I think a lot of Christians um, forget that he also died for our healing. He took every infirmity on the cross, every sickness, every disease. Um, Psalms 103.3 says he forgives all our iniquities and heals all of our diseases. And my favorite healing scripture of all is 1 Peter 2.24. By his stripes we are healed. It doesn't say we might be. doesn't say we're going to be. It says by his stripes we are healed. So it was provided in advance. Just like salvation was provided in advance 2,000 years ago. He died and paid for the sins. Now our job is just to receive that. And if you receive it, if you believe it, and you ask for it, then you have received it. The same way can work with healing. If you will ask for it and you will come into agreement with that scripture, maybe even quote that scripture, by his stripes I am healed. Uh, healing can come instantly. Now, sometimes we need to call for the elders to join and get that prayer power going with us. Other times, you know, uh, Jesus uh, brought healing many ways. Sometimes he commanded, you know, be healed in the name of Jesus. Sometimes, you know, it, we, we get what we speak. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. The word says that. It says there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And I know for me, uh, my sister had Guillain-Barre syndrome. And one night she was in the hospital and I had come home to sleep a few hours and was going to go back. She was very, very serious. And um, I'd been at the hospital for days and so I came home. 
and uh, I was awakened from a dead sleep and the Holy Spirit uh, just woke me straight awake to the point that I sat straight up in bed and I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I had to get on it or she wasn't going to make it. Mm -hmm. I ran into the restroom off of our bedroom and began to walk the floor confessing by his drive she is healed. And somehow I knew to pray for the lungs. I began to ask the Holy Spirit. I knew because of the urgency the Holy Spirit impressed upon me she was not going to live. I began to command the breath of life to come into her lungs. And I asked the Holy Spirit, and he is breath. That's what the Holy Spirit is, is a breath of life from God. It's God's spirit. And so I just said, Holy Spirit, just fill her lungs with you and begin to confess life over my sister. And I declared she will live and not die and declare the mighty exploits of our God. And I prayed this until I had a peace that I knew it was okay. And once peace came, you know, peace can be our guide to things. Once peace came, I knew she was okay. And I got dressed, got in the car and drove about 40 miles to where she was in the hospital. And I found out when I got there that she had had all the alarms go off and that she had, she was dying. She nearly died. Mm -hmm. And at that very moment, the Holy Spirit had woke me up. So again, the word says, by his stripes, we are healed. And Laura had enough faith to believe that mm -hmm. and to speak it. There's life mm -hmm. and death in the power of the tongue. Can so I, go can, ahead. Can I just say a couple of things to what you're talking about? Um, I think everybody should, out there should know that there is nothing special about me, absolutely nothing. Or me. That, yes, or Deborah. There's nothing special about either one of us. That we are, have just been open to the leading of the Holy Spirit, open for God to work in our lives, open for the power of Jesus to be working in our lives. So there's nothing spouse about, special about us. We haven't done any kind of healing. I haven't done any kind of healing. It's all through Jesus working through me, being open for Jesus to work through me to be any mm -hmm. kind of healing and mm -hmm. do works through me. It is mm -hmm. not me doing the healing. It is not me. It is the name of Jesus, the power of Jesus. I think that should be definitely noted, and I think you should know that I just have been open for the leading to mm -hmm. of God to work through me. That Holy Spirit, work through word, me. Laura. Work through me. It's not me. It's not me going, okay, who can I do today? No, it's work through me. Um, that, that, that is really important. I wanted to I say that because... I that's a very good yes. word, and it's at his beck and call. You heard the thud. The Spirit prompted yes, you. Yes. That was the Holy Spirit prompting you. There wasn't any question for her whether she should move. There wasn't any question yes. for me whether I should jump out of bed and run into the, the bathroom and start praying. When it's the Holy Spirit, you will get a quickening. You mm -hmm. will know this is what you're supposed to do. Yes. That is the Spirit leading you. And when you get that tug, you will know it. And you will just begin to feel you're supposed to speak it out. And then don't doubt. Somebody told me one time, don't doubt in the darkness what you learned in the light. Mm. So if you That's get a, good one. a healing prompting and you pray for that healing and you see evidence and you see um, the person begin to respond, then don't begin to doubt it later. Don't doubt later. Don't doubt in the darkness what you learned in the light. And, um, you know, I think that's what the, sometimes the enemy tries to do is get us to, to, he'll try to come back in and steal that healing away. Mm -hmm. Some of you maybe have been prayed for and you were feeling better, but mm -hmm. you've had some symptoms try to come back on you. Mm -hmm. No, you go back and declare 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes, you are healed. And you declare that over yourself and believe it and walk in it and receive it. I think also one thing you're saying too, um, you haven't used, you, you've said it, but you haven't used the exact words I'm going to say is command because you are speaking also to that infirmity. You're speaking to that 
um, demonic force that is trying to come against you or coming against the other person you're praying for mm -hmm. and that you are commanding that in the name of Jesus. That mm -hmm. is so important. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, name you of are Jesus commanding. Is very important. And it, it, yeah, that, I mean, that's the healing. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you could say whatever you want to say, but you got to make sure it's in the name of Jesus that you're uh -huh. doing this and how you're operating. Uh -huh. The spirit is working in the name of Jesus and you're commanding mm -hmm. too. So there again, that's not you doing it. That is truly the Holy Spirit and, mm -hmm. and taking authority. That's the whole thing, taking the authority. Can I, can I share a couple of verses or um, not? Or do you want us to say too? In, in one second, I want to share one thing while I'm okay. thinking about it. I like what she shared about how it's nothing special about me. And I think I've shared this with her before, but I had an incident just not too long ago where I was invited to join someone for kind of a celebration of a women's group. And we were all at round tables. And at the end, they asked us to pray for one another. And there was a young lady there who had been to Chicago. She'd been to surgeons. She'd been everywhere. And she was just told that this back pain she had, she was just going to have to live with. And that she had one leg shorter, almost an inch shorter than the other leg. And it was a drastic enough difference that if she walked at all without a heel lift in, even just to get out of the tub or whatever, it would throw it all off again. And she was just told she had to live with this. And so a friend and I were in the group and we were like, oh, heck no, you are too young. She was a very young woman. And it was just like that prompting came, no, this is not going to be like this. And so we, I just asked the ladies, hey, who's willing to agree with healing? And I asked the young lady, are you willing to receive a healing? It is very important that they be willing to receive a healing. Mm -hmm. And I asked people that, are you willing to receive a healing? And I explained to them, this has nothing to do with me. We're going to all begin to pray, but I want everybody to keep their eyes open. And I'm going to command her leg to be lengthened to the length of the other one. And I said, but before we start, I just want to thank the Lord that he is the healer. And I just started thanking him. Lord, thank you that you're the healer. Thank you for who you are. And as I begin to praise God and thank him, I shut my eyes without thinking of it because I wasn't ready yet for the big command that I was going to do. And as I began to praise him that he was the healer, the leg just grew. And all the girls saw it. They saw the leg grow out and match the other one. And the girl who was healed felt it. I felt it bouncing in my hands because I had her feet in my hands. And, but you know, again, it was about not me. I wasn't even ready yet. I was gonna keep my eyes open when I commanded be healed in the name of Jesus. I hadn't even said be healed in the name of Jesus. I just began to thank God that he was the healer. And out of that thankful heart, he just did it. So, you know, no two healings are alike, but I knew it was Jesus I was calling on. And I was just praising God, but we were there for the purpose of healing. And because I was thanking him, it happened while we were thanking him for being the healer. So, well, we got just a couple minutes left, Laura, and I want you um, to share whatever it is. Take these last couple okay. minutes. Maybe it's a scripture. Okay. Yes. Maybe it's, and just share oh, maybe right. a minute and a half or whatever, okay. whatever it is you want to say. I know we're down to the last couple of minutes, but I want to say piggyback off of that uh, for the healing of the legs. I attend the Vineyard Church here in Urbana, and they have been experiencing there at the church um, the same thing with legs that are growing out to the same length, which has just been an awesome experience That's to see awesome. the Holy Spirit working and healing in the name of Jesus. and. That has just been off. So if you're looking That's for a beautiful. church locally, because this is Urbana, the Vineyard Church on Lincoln Avenue is just on fire as far as the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit working. Now, it's not a showboat. It's not a come look at the show. That is not the case. It is all praise and worship, and the Holy Spirit is there working. So don't think that it's that kind of place. It's like love-based. It's love-based, yes. I want to share very quickly, because I know we're almost out of time. Look, if you have your Bibles, Mark chapter 16, and I want to go look at verses 17 and 18. I'm not going to read the whole thing because we're almost out of time. But if you look at, and the signs will accompany the, those who believe, keyword, those who believe in my name, in my name. And I want to jump down because we don't have time and time is almost out. Look at verse eight, 18. They will place their hands on sick people 
and they will get well. That is a biblical verse. It's in the Bible. Again, that was Mark 16, set verses 17 and 18. You can count on it. This is what Jesus says. This is his word. His word is true. Mm -hmm. So believe it. Do it. Um, this is his word. And he's not a man that he should lie. So I, mm -hmm. I, I guess I'll let's That's a send good it back word. to you because we're, well, we're out. Well, we are. We're about out of time. And uh, I just want to throw one more scripture, Proverbs 4.22. Uh, talking about the words, the words that are in the Bible. They are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. And so we're just going to keep believing for your healing out there. And uh, this is Deborah Holt on Living It Up on Up TV. We'll see you next time. God bless you.